Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the seventh day of Bookmas. So for today's video, I thought it'd be really fun. I saw this idea on someone else's channel. I think a few other people have probably done this. It's nothing new at all. Basically, I'm going to be ranking my, like a handful of the books that I've read in 2021 purely based on their cover instead of doing all of my books because I would be here for ages if I did all of the books that I read in 2021. So far, I did a random number generator and basically picked out 50 of the books. So... I'm going to go ahead and start screening my, oh I just took a screenshot, I wasn't supposed to do that. Anyway, let's just, let's just get into this. I think everything should be fine. Um, knowing me, I'll probably end up going to edit this video and then realising that I'm missing a lot of stuff. But you know, we're, we're going to roll with it. The first book that I've got right here is 112263 by Stephen King. I'm pretty sure there's ones that are more attractive than the one I read. I am going off of the ones that I read. I'm really just not feeling the cover. I don't think it's terrible. I think that it's somewhat topical to, I mean, obviously it makes sense. It's about the assassination of JFK. Obviously there's gonna be a picture of like the iconic moment where JFK was kind of, you know, in his car with his wife. So I think that like it makes sense, but it's also not the most attractive. So I'm gonna put it into needs some work. And next we've got a little life. Now, one of the things that I really like about this cover is that it like in the, in, within the words, it's got like, it's hard to explain, but it's like there's obviously a picture of like somewhere in New York, I would presume. It kind of gives the vibes. It shows you that it's set in New York. It's very bold, but it's also quite simple. And I quite like that. So I think I'm going to put it in cutie. I don't think it's fabulous. I don't think there's anything particularly amazing about it. Um, I will say that that cover is so much better than the other cover. We're not even going to talk about it. Next, we have Ace of Spades. Now, there's two different editions that I've seen, the UK one and the American one. I've got the UK edition. I much prefer the US one. I just like the kind of illustrated characters on the front and whatnot. However, I will say that I quite like this cover. It's not like anything amazing. I like that it's got the, the spades symbol in the back and that you can kind of see the, the two main characters. But once again, it's like nothing amazing. So I think I'm gonna put that in cutie as well. We haven't really gotten to any like amazing ones or terrible ones. I might not go in order. I might just like pick out some of the ones that I really don't like or some of the ones that I really do like. Do you know what? There's not any here that I think are absolutely terrible. I'm not going to lie. I think also I am too nice to be doing this right now. No, actually, do you know what? I, I'm lying. One that I really, really hate is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. The reason that, like, I don't like this one is because it is kind of like that mass market kind of thing. And, like, honestly, the, the editions of Narnia that I've got, of the Narnia books, they're, like, they are terrible. Like, genuinely terrible. One that I really like. Because I want to kind of, like, balance this out a bit. I want to put one that I really, really like. I really like the cover of Mexican Gothic. And I think it has potential to go at the very top. I think I'm going to put it at the very top. There's something just very, like, artsy about this cover. And that's why it's potentially one of my favourite covers. It is so, like, it is simple. There's not too much going on. But it also, like, I feel like I could say that it's iconic. The colours, I absolutely love. That it's just kind of mainly two colours. And then that pop of yellow kind of at the bottom. You can kind of, it gives you the vibe of where the setting is. And what time it is. Based on, like, the kind of the wallpaper in the back and her costume. Her costume, her dress. So, I really like it. I think it's amazing. Okay, another 2021 best dress which kind of has similar vibes. All Boys Aren't Blue is really giving like the Frida Kahlo self-portrait vibe. I really love it. It is gorgeous. It's stunning. I love the colours in the back. Again, it's just the colours. The typography is like playful, but simple and striking. And I really like the kind of the curve of their neck and the way that the, the writing kind of fits in. Let's go back to the beginning. So Akamath, I, this is a bit of like a, a polarizing question. Some people like the old Akatar like covers and some people prefer the newer ones. I really think it depends on how you're classifying the books because the old ones really give me like a younger 
age rating kind of feel to them. I really like them. They're more playful. They're definitely gorgeous, but I also really like the newer ones for like giving a slightly aged up look. In terms of this ranking, I am going to put it in... I'm going to put it in cutie again. Battle Royale is one that I absolutely love. Is it best dressed though? I don't know. I think that it's really striking. In real life, it looks... It's, it's fabulous. Sometimes I like to just stare at it. I like that it is literally just kind of like a scene, like a snippet from the story. I really like that element. But I don't know if it's best dressed. Now, I've got, to, I've got to say it's best dressed because I do, like, personally really like it. And I think that it is up there at the top. I'm going to switch over to Cress. There was a new set of covers that was basically released for the Lunar Chronicles. And I prefer them a lot more. They kind of have more, like, full portraits of the characters. And I really like the style of them. These ones just feel very, like, not mass market paperback, but kind of, like, in between mass market paperback and, like, actual nice covers, if that makes any sense. Like, kind of your standard dystopian sci-fi series. So, I really am not a fan of it, but I don't think it's horrible. Yeah, I don't think it's horrible, so I'm going to say need some work. I feel like there's going to be a lot of them. Actually, do you know what? No, I have one that I think could go in Fabulous. I do have one that I think would be quite good in Fabulous. That is Those Who Pray move okay it's going there for the minute those who pray i really like it <laughs> that was a great description i really like the use of the the pink i like the fact that it's like monochrome but with pink i don't know if, is it still monochrome yeah i guess it is monochrome it's relatively monochrome we'll see with a little bit of black thrown in there and then that you've kind of got like this that she's looking over her shoulder you get this feeling of she's very isolated and it gives off the vibes of like what the book's about. It's about someone who is basically feels so isolated and lonely that she ends up joining a cult. One that I'm going to put down in Unforgivable is We Were Liars. I just think it's very boring and plain. Another one that I really don't like is Home Before Dark. I feel like in general, Roy Sager's books don't have the best covers and I think that is mainly a thriller thing. Like thrillers tend to not have great covers. And it's kind of sad because thrillers are really good books and then they just get shit covers. So, like, what is up with that? I don't like that. The Girls I've Been, I would say, is fabulous. Fabulous. First of all, the haircut looks like Edna Mode from The Incredibles. So, of course, it's fabulous. But also, it's striking. I love the colour. It's bold. And it also, the fact that there's no face. It makes you feel like the main character is a bit of an enigma, which she definitely is. Like, you're trying to figure out who she is. Oh, I'm going to go with there's someone inside your house needs some work. I like the, the, the font on it. I like whatever the hell that effect is, where it's kind of like, it looks like the font's kind of like bent to, for some reason. But I just think it's so boring. It's like, you could do something, you could do a lot more with it. And it's just really boring. And it's like, why do I need to see a set of stairs? I don't think it's that, like important in the story to have a set of stairs on the cover i'm gonna put ninth house on fabulous it's very simple it's very striking again similar to the girls i've been i really like the snake i think snakes are really cool so snakes are fabulous the minders like what the fuck is that cover like seriously again the same with home before dark why do thrillers not get better covers? If it wasn't for the fact that I knew who the authors were, I just wouldn't have picked up the books because the covers are not that striking. The Taking of Jake Livingston has a nice cover. I don't think it's best dressed, but I think I could definitely put it in Fabulous. I think it gives off the vibe of what it's about. He looks spooked, so you're like, maybe I'm going to be spooked when I read this. A book that I think that has an absolutely brilliant cover 2021 Best Dressed, My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I just love the fact that this is very 80s. Anything that looks very 80s, I'm just instantly drawn to. Hashtag murder trending. I'm going to put it in need some work because I like the... I like the thought process behind it. I like the simplicity of it. I like the fact that you can kind of figure out, like, what's going on with the characters. It gives you a little bit of insight into what's going to happen with the characters or who they are, but at the same time, it's not giving you too much information. One that I actually, one that's a thriller cover that I actually think is quite good is Every Value Break. I'm going to put it in cutie. I really like the font on this. I like the fact that it's not like completely blocky. Like it kind of looks like it's been painted on. And I think it fits with kind of the bottom bit of it where it's like, you know, whatever that is. The cover of Bunny. Because there are multiple covers as well. Like there's multiple different versions. And I feel like lots of people have different varying like opinions of this particular cover of Bunny. 
I personally think it is fabulous. It almost looks like the bunny is illustrated. I like the way that all the words kind of fit around or within the bunny. And I really like the font of this. So I actually think it's great. And I love the orange color. I really like bright colors on books. One I quite like as well, but I wouldn't say it's quite fabulous. So I'm gonna put it in cutie, it's the nature of witches. I think I've got to put both Danny Brown and Eve Brown in cutie. I don't think there's anything too, super special about them. I think they're really sweet and I like this kind of cover on contemporaries. Every Heart a Doorway, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. So I'm gonna put Need Some Work. City of Ghosts, I really like this cover in real life. It doesn't look as nice when it's like a picture, but like in real life, it's got kind of shiny font. I think I'm gonna put it in cutie as well. I think it's gonna have to go there. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, I personally prefer the other edition, like the one that's, I think, the American one. But I also quite like this one as well. And I've just got to say, because that gown is iconic, it has to go in fabulous. I think the natural thing to say, just because, like, the adjective that I think of when I look at the Heartstopper Volume 1 cover is to say cutie. And I think I'm just going to put it in there because of that. <laughs> This edition of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. There's definitely some really ugly editions out there. I think this is one of the most attractive ones. I don't think it's anything special, but I also don't think it needs any work. So I'm gonna put it in cutie. It has in the Cerulean Sea. This is actually what I'm reading at the moment, but I wanted to add this in. I really like this cover. I like the fact that the American and the UK version are very similar, just slightly different. And I really like this and I just think it's really cute. Like I really like the illustration, so I'm gonna put it in best dressed. The humans, again, there's nothing like super special about this. I wouldn't say it's fabulous. I'm gonna put it in cutie. Like I think that that's where it deserves to be. I'll be gone in the dark. This one's kind of boring, but like as far as some of the covers go, this is one of my favorite ones of this one, but also I don't think it's amazing. So it's gonna go in, it needs some work. I really like the, set up like the main bit of this like where it's georgie and pennywise with the balloon and i i'm pretty sure that like if you look it looks like pennywise's face is showing through the balloon a little bit so i really like that but there's also other editions that i prefer and i'm not a massive fan of tie-in editions so i think i'm going to put it in need some work even though i really love this book jade city one thing that i really like about this is that like all of the books in the trilogy have like the same font and like basically the same cover just with different colors. I like that it's simple. I like that you can see the kind of electricity kind of thing. So I'm gonna put it in fabulous. I think it is quite fabulous. Jane's the Giant Peach. Obviously it's a middle grade. It's like a children's book. So it's on the childish side, but I do really like Quentin Blake's illustrations. In comparison to a lot of other book covers, I feel like it needs to go and need some work. But like for the time that this came out and for the fact that it's a children's book, I actually think it's pretty amazing. Leave the World Behind. This one I quite like actually. I like the simplicity. I kind of like the colour. I think the background colour is like a really weird shade of pink, but I actually quite like it. And I like the deer. So I'm gonna put it in cutie because I like deer. I've seen a few different editions of Little Eyes by Samantha Schweblin. This one is probably one of my least favourites. I like the one where it's kind of similar, but it's just like one of the Kentucky dolls. Like it's just one picture where it's quite big. So I'm going to put this in Need Some Work. I really like this cover of Meddling Kids. Um, there's also another edition, edition that I think I prefer better. Just because I am not like super keen on the kind of like silhouette kind of thing going on. Um, and I think aside from like this red, it's like a very boring cover. I think it's all right. I don't think it's terrible. And I think unfortunately the fact that I just read this book and really didn't enjoy it that much is going to be coloring the fact that I, yeah, I'm just going to say it needs some work. My Dark Vanessa, I, okay, that, that hair thing going on, like the fact that there's hair like really adds to the creepiness is a fucking creepy story. Everything that is inspired by in real life is creepy as well. And I wish I could eradicate it from this planet, but unfortunately I can't. So I'm going to say the fact that it gives off those creepy, that creepiness, it shows you that it's a bloody creepy book, um, is very good. I don't want to put it in cutie because it feels like I'm saying that creepy vibes are cute. 
They can be, but not in this context. But I'm gonna put it in QT because I don't think that it needs any work. I think that it is quite a good cover. Hashtag no escape. I prefer this a lot more to hashtag murder trending. Like I think that the cover, I actually preferred the book as well, like the actual story, but I think the cover is really cool. I like this whole chain thing going on, but like, I don't think it's amazing. So again, I'm gonna put it in need some work. Normal people, um, there's definitely better editions of normal people. I find this cover to just be a little bit boring, but I like the fact that they're in a sardine tin. I think it's funny. I'm also gonna put it in need some work. Just like personally, you know, there's, there's covers that are a lot better than this. So I think just by comparison, I have to put it in there. Right, this edition of Peter Pan is bloody gorgeous. I've seen more like different, like different books in these editions as well, and they're all gorgeous. It's not a favorite of mine, so it's gonna go in fabulous, but it is fabulous. It is very gorgeous. Um, I also like the fact that there's like this little dude down here that is wearing something that looks like an acorn. So cool. This poison heart, this is going straight to, not there, not there, too best dressed. It is bloody gorgeous. Like, it is gorgeous. It's giving me similar vibes to All Boys Aren't Blue. Just that kind of like, that strong black main character just standing there, you know, you can just tell like, you can just tell she's a badass. Like standing there, it looks like she's got like almost, oh no, she's standing there with her hand out. I was gonna say it looked like she had her hands on her hips, but like it just, it looks like a power stance. And you know, you just know going into it that you're gonna be reading about like a really kick-ass main character and that is amazing. The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I personally prefer the cover where it's like two peaches, but like obviously it's got a similar vibe here. I just think the other one is better. So I still like the cover. It's going in cutie. It's not quite fabulous or iconic, but I still really like it. And then we've got Amulet. This is the second volume of Amulet and I'm just not that bothered about it. It's not unforgivable, but it's not amazing. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, Survive the Night. This is one of the Riley Sega covers that I actually quite like. I feel like there's like, because obviously there's different editions and stuff like that. But also this isn't like amazing. I just quite like the the font of it. Um, I don't know what's going on with the eyes, like why they're different, but you know, cool. I like the little car down at the bottom, the headlights. We're gonna put it in cutie, I think it's cool. Tender as the Flesh. Again, I think this has some better editions, but it's all right. Um, so I'm gonna put it in... No, I'm gonna put it in cutie as well, because I still quite like it. The Thursday Murder Club. I quite like this cover. I don't think there's anything special about it, but it's going in cutie. Trust Exercises, this is just a bloody boring cover. Like, it's a really, I don't hate it. And like, it makes sense why like, it's just got two chairs, but it's also super boring. And then this, ooh, I don't know. I'm just gonna put it in QT just for the sake of it. Cause I really don't have a bloody clue. I think, I think I'm done. <laughs> oh my God, I feel like I've been sitting here forever. Now you can see the full thing. Um, I think I did an all right job at like getting them separated. I was worried that all of them would be in the same thing. I mean, there is a lot within the QT bit and I feel like there's quite a few in the need some work category, even though like originally I thought it was gonna be really difficult to do that. Let me know what your favorite cover of 2021 is. So what is the book that has the most beautiful cover that you've read in 2021 or a couple of them in your opinion. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then feel free to stick around and click the subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. I will see you in my next video.